most two-stage triggers, I'm speaking on Geisley's behalf, you are going to hit wall. It's not going to move anywhere past wall because it's then going to break. That would be the ideal pistol trigger. Some of us had that. Some of us have that. 2011s, the technology is fucking 100 years old and as far as the trigger goes, and they have that, which is awesome. You're not having to find or pull through these, but how many of us running Glock, SIGs, and the other uh, manufacturers of striker fire guns did you find, all right, I found one leap, basically I bring it to the wall, I found a leap, I found another leap, and as I added steady pressure, the next leap went bang. That is your C point, and you are a what count gun? Three count, Three count gun. When, with my demonstration, I had slack, wall i had one and then it went what bang so i'm a two count gun this would be now my c all right you guys need to learn your triggers and all triggers are going to be differently different as far as design as far as where the where and how it breaks but you guys got to start looking at interrupted trigger presses a continuous trigger press when i just come up and i slap that trigger back to the rear what's it disrupting sights when i come up and start prepping to the wall of that trigger and I add steady pressure till it goes bang on its own, not me saying sights are aligned now, inducing any kind of tensing of muscle groups to mitigate of recoil. That's when I'm starting to disrupt my sights. Now I want to just come up, find wall, add steady pressure. By focusing here, the dot is obviously moving, like it's got this little wobble zone and then it says bang, right? What's gonna happen, especially if you guys are moving and shooting and you guys want to try to settle the site, if your focus is dot, this is what the dot is doing. It's massive. It's the size of the dot in representation of uh, from eye to that ocular lens and that representation of the dot. If you focus at the target, it has a much longer sight radius of 25 yards. Now my figure eight has now minimalized. So it's going to now keep me where? a much smaller pattern within that accountability zone, which is giving me a high, higher probable success keeping within 10 inches of size of target. As I'm superimposing my finger on your chest, and then I look at your chest, and then I superimpose it on there. Is my focus on the, the finger or the chest? The chest. Yes. the chest. Another analogy I'll give, it's a very, very good representation of, I'm on my computer. I take my mouse, I look at whatever icon or whatever um, thing I wanna click on, and then I do what? go looking at cursor to get it there, or I just look at there and drive the cursor to it. And you're not actually looking at the cursor ever. That's the exact representation of what I want you to do with your dots. Now to not disrupt that alignment that you're creating, you have to focus on your trigger. Now the back side of this is gonna be the, the actual fall through step of resetting the trigger. And this is what I'm gonna get into next. So <clears throat> the resetting of that, I want to find placement break from one singular joint because when I take my little finger gun and bend it back from two joints, where's the pad of my finger pointing? Over here, creating influence to the right side, which drives the nose where? Left. When I break it from one singular joint, whether it's my pistol, my rifle, my shotgun, or a precision rifle, I'm breaking from one isolated joint from one levered position built from the trigger back. All right, isolating straight back to the rear. As you guys will see, I have some slack. I have that wall. Once I find that wall, I add steady pressure, gun bangs, right? And there's no stops like there was with the trigger. On the reset, if you are, like I was taught in the Marine Corps, pinning this trigger to the rear and then slowly releasing, watch the trigger. Did I have to pay, take up that slack again? I absolutely did. Showing you guys again. Re I'm going to reset this trigger and then I now have to take up that slack. How many of you are actually honestly taking up that slack every single time on rounds? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 through a click bang. It's going way over your head. You had no freaking clue that, oh shit, I'm inducing more movement of disruption within the follow on shots, which are already inherently harder. Instead, during the cycle of operations, I want to reduce pressure I have exerted on this trigger and bring it up to a certain point. Now, as I add steady pressure, there's no slack. Again, as this gun cycles, my finger reduces pressure I have exerted on it and then finds that sear reset point. Now I no longer have slack, I'm not pulling through anything, I'm adding steady pressure, and it bangs. Short stroke, bang, bang, right? That's called an in-flight reset. JJ Rakaza coined the term, so I'm gonna give credit where credit is due, but essentially you are resetting the trigger during the cycle of operations of the gun. Single stage triggers. 
Single stage triggers are a little different. You have absolutely no creep. You add steady pressure, you add steady pressure, you add steady pressure, it goes to C immediately. Now, the resetting of this, you could pin it to the rear, you can reset it, and notice there's no more slack like there was with a two stage trigger. So you can be very, very sloppy with a, with a single stage gun. Literally pinning it to the rear, jamming it back to the rear jamming it back to the rear every single time because you have no movement movement variable it's a pivot variable so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on creating those in-flight resets in order to focus on our trigger control where are our eyes and our focus we're focusing on trigger all right it's resetting in flight i'm just reducing pressure i have exerted on it My name is Kyle Moore. Um, I'm from Oxford, Mississippi. I've been in law enforcement for 12 years with tactical entry teams for 10 of those years. Um, I run a company called Safe Haven Dynamics out of Oxford and we do training, retail, a um, little bit of everything. And I just got finished up here in Auburn, Alabama with Achilles Hill Tactical with baseline pistol and baseline carbine. You know, you start out in the, these police departments, sheriff's offices and uh, state departments, any of these agencies, and the training's not exactly top tier when you start out. Um, and I realized that pretty quick and just decided I wanted to get a little more involved in the training. That's why I try to go to as many of these kind of classes as I can just on my own dime and learn what I can from different instructors and different ways of life and uh, walks of the past and just try to sharpen the tools that I can get. My name is Terry Bro. I'm an investigator with the Lee County Sheriff's Office here in uh, Lee County, Alabama. I'm an investigator and I'm also a member of the SWAT team. And today we did the baseline pistol course with Achilles Tactics. My background, where I come from, which is New Orleans, Louisiana, my family was on the opposite side of the law. So growing up, you know, I viewed law enforcement as like the bad guys, you know, but as I got older, you know, I started to think for myself, then I realized, you know, well, they're not as bad as, you know, we all think they are, you know, so I took it upon myself, you know, to go down this path to, you know, eventually uh, show the younger folks like my cousins, you know, like that it's not what we thought it was growing up, you know, like you have to, you know, get your own perception of something, not go off of what somebody else say, you know what I'm saying? So once I did that, I saw that, you know, well, this is something that, you know, like I want to dive into, you know, because I genuinely, I have a love for, you know, like just helping people, motivate folks, helping them to bring out the best of themselves, you know? One of my favorite things about doing this is you learn something different from every instructor. It doesn't matter if you're an instructor yourself, if you go to 100 of these a year, you're going to learn, even on the baseline courses like this, I mean, you're going to learn something new from every instructor. And you can put yourself a nice little chest together of everything you learn from each person and get some great fundamentals going. And um, that's for sure would be my first thing. And the other great thing about these classes is the people you meet. You meet a lot of good people, a lot of good backgrounds. Uh, just a lot of like-minded good dudes that want to get together and do this kind of stuff and, and learn. That's, that's the best part of all of it. Um, I heard about you all through one of my teammates. He told me about the Project Blue Lion. So I got on there and I looked it up and I guess it was like it said, choose an instructor. So I saw AHT. I know them from, you know, him from Instagram, you know, like watching his content and I really enjoyed it, you know. So I was like, let me go ahead on and choose him and, you know, hopefully be able to get in one of his classes and, and, and learn something from him. I, I, I loved it. Like everything that, that that he put out you know like i said uh he he, he didn't just tell us to do something or, or showed us like he explained that why that a lot of instructors don't do when you know like they're they're putting out content you know so him explaining that why and me grasping that and understanding like okay well yes okay so this is why you know i'm either missing you know like high or low or, or my shots are not as consistent because you know well my grip is not you know like what it's supposed to be you know like he was teaching us about uh, the lever concept like that's something I never even thought about was even taught like and I've, I've been to a bunch of trainings and I've never had one instructor break it down and show it like he did today. It's an industry of alpha 
minded individuals, but when you find that good community and you get together with these good dudes that really are just eager to learn, meet other good people and just feed off of each other, that's, that's the best part of all this. I mean, you gotta have that community. I'd love to bring uh, Achilles Hill to Oxford to my facility. Um, I'd be happy to host. I, that's one of the things I like to try to do. I like to try to kind of go and see how everybody does before bringing them in just to make sure everything is smooth sailing, everybody's safe, and the instructor is, is everything they, you know, I feel like they can be. And Achilles Hill is definitely on par with that. And I definitely wouldn't mind training with them. I'll, I will pay my own dime to travel and train some more and then uh, definitely bring them to my place to train. Without a doubt, if, if, if I'm able to, whether it's through Project Blue Lion or myself, you know, like if there's one within this area, I'll definitely attend, you know, because I felt like I've, I've gotten much better, you know, like as a shooter today, you know.